Good day, Sven the Slayer here once again, and welcome back to Star Maid. This will be episode 7 of my Practical Logic series, and today I'll be going over advanced docking and how to build them. In my last docking tutorial, I went over the operation of this advanced dock here, and it's pretty simple. You fly in, open the door, dock, it closes the door behind you, when you depart again, it opens the door and holds it open for a set amount of time and then closes it again. It's pretty simple and it's also very easy to build so I will show you how to build that and the bigger brother that allows for multiple docks to be used because this only works with a single dock. Just a quick note before we get started, the circuit itself does not need to be next to the dock but you will need an input block and a chain of activators or you can just take the input from the circuit itself and have it next to the dock and then just build the circuit elsewhere as long as all the connections are correct. Now this circuit is actually fairly easy to build. In fact, I've pretty much already showed you how to build it. Um, back in episode 2 when I was covering pulse limiters, this is nothing more than what I called a dual state pulse limiter. So this will send out a low pulse every time the state is changed. So whenever this activator is toggled either way, it'll send out a pulse. And to build that, we just have a knot, a delay. So the activator is connected up to a knot and a delay, and then both of those are connected up to an OR. Now I'm going to build this in the same pattern I built it there. You can have your layout any way you like. So now that's the first pulse limiter. So each time this goes high, it'll send out a low pulse. And that is the circuit that closes the door when you enter. So when your ship docks, this goes high and sends out a pulse that'll um, open and close the door essentially, but the door should already be open, um, so it'll just close the door. Or if the door is closed, it'll just open it and close it real quick. There's, there's no way around that. And then this one, from this knot, will start the second pulse limiter. And then this will be your variable delay chain. You can make it as long as you want. So it's just delay into delay into delay into delay into delay. And then that delay goes into an OR. And the, that OR also takes signal from this activator. And then that is your second pulse. So you just have to cycle it real quick. So essentially when this one goes low, this will send out a low pulse. And it'll be a um, variable length pulse depending on how long your delay chain is. And next up, all you have to do is take the two ORs from your both of your pulse limiters and connect them with an AND gate. And then this is your output. So this gets connected up to your door. So when you dock, it's already closed so nothing happened. And then when you take off, it opens up the door, and when this delay chain runs out, door closes. And then you open up the door when you dock again. So all you have to do is rig up an activator here, or replace this activator with that one. You just have to wire this activator into the, uh, the delay, the knot, and the OR here. and just like that, that's the same thing. So you can put this circuit anywhere you like. But for simplicity's sakes, I just like keeping it nice and nice and compact. And... just put my docking module down like that. And if you want to rig up your optional uh, components off of the output here for the blinker is an OR that OR into a NOT and then NOT NOT into a delay and then the delay back into the OR and that is your blinker circuit so whenever the door is open it'll blink and then that NOT signal there is what is linked up to, to your light so anytime the blinker is blinking, the light will blink. 
and setting up the door hold open switch is simply you just put down an activator and rig that into the AND so when this goes low that AND is no longer on so the door will be open the blinker will blink and if you want this to be uh, inverted you're just gonna have to put a a knot in there so turning this high to open the door but that's just personal preference it it doesn't really change the function of the thing and now I'll show you how to build the multiple dock version it is essentially the same circuit just with different components um, that are not integrated so several of the components have been separated out into their own standalone bits so to do this we'll just need two pulse limiters so I'll set up a high pulse limiter first so that is an activator into a knot and an AND gate the knot gets wired into a delay the delay into the AND and then the AND back into the activator so this is a high pulse limiter sends out a high pulse when activated and then this one we want a low pulse limiter which is built exactly the same way just with an OR at the end so activator into a knot and an OR the knot into a delay, the delay into the, act, the OR gate, and then the OR gate back into the activator. And once you've built enough of these, you'll just be able to build them second nature. So what this does is this allows us to take multiple inputs, and each time any of those inputs changes, it'll send out a pulse. So we have our two docks here, and they get wired into both of those activators and each time one of these changes states it'll send out the various pulse that it needs in order to function the door to operate the door so now this low pulse limiter gets turned into a um, pulse lengthener so to do that you take the activator into an AND gate and then that AND gate into an OR and then the OR gate back into the end. This is a um, two-block memory cell. So we can also take the a signal off of this delay here, and this will be the first delay in your delay chain. And then you make that as long or as short as you need it to be. And then this delay gets wired into the other side of the uh, memory cell here, so the OR gate here. So now when we set this off, got to trigger it and have it in the high state. So when you hit this, this memory cell will turn low, and then after your delay chain, it'll turn on high again. Or, yeah. So next up, all we have to do is wire the inputs into a single circuit that'll control the door, and that is an AND gate. So the memory cell and then we want the knot from the high pulse limiter and then this AND goes into the door so each time one of these states changes it'll control the function of the door so door open door closed and then if the door is open it'll close the door for you and just like the other one if you want the optional blinker you take the AND gate here into an OR, and then that OR into a knot, and then the knot knot into a delay, and then the delay back into the OR gate, and then this knot goes up to your light. So when the door is open, the light should blink. Yeah. That activator was in the wrong state. So when the door is open the light will blink until the door shuts and you also have the ability to add a hold open switch just by wiring in an activator to that and your output the same way so that'll hold the door open so if you have multiple ships you are expecting to come in and dock you don't want it to close the door every time the ship docks well that'll about cover it for um, two more advanced docking circuits and there's there's much more you can do with docking once you start adding in area triggers um, I know my carrier has area triggers doing a lot of work too so I may go over those in the future 
or just leave that up to you. Um, we shall see. I have more of these planned. Uh, next episode will be on multiple floor elevators. And thanks for watching. I hope you learned something, and I will see you in the next video.